Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 minute podcast. Morning, Jordan. Good morning. Yeah, you look a bit like, um, what's the guy, what's the guy out of Wolf of Wall Street, but the guy that goes, um, um, yeah, is it Matthew Cut? He, he's the best. I yeah, forget his you, name. you look like a bit like him today in your yeah. new shirt. Yeah, yeah, Jackson. Good morning. You look like you just got out of prison when you, in your singlet, <laughs> in your wife beater. I feel good. Is that what they call it? Wife beater? Or wife beater, yeah. yeah. Tank top. Tank top. They used to be all the rage when I was young. They're my gym shirt. Love this shirt. I live in these things. Yeah, you look good. You should do the Wolf of Wall Street beat at the uh, next sales meeting. Uh, ka-ka, ka-ka. <laughs> Walking down the street. Ka-ka, ka-ka. You can. <laughs> oh, I, I can't there. wait. I'm just you on the sidelines ready. <laughs> to be the most fried CEO ever. Yep. No, I'm yeah. No, it's on its way, I can tell you. Um, we have a question. Let's get straight into it. Yep. So, well, when I say a question, this we get lots of questions, but this question is a good one, I think. It's a good one. And we'll let's read it out quickly. All right, we'll read it out. Do you want me to tell you who it's from? Yeah. It's from Nicole Barnes. She says, what is it that you're chasing? This is in response to a video I put up the other day. I can't see what the video says, but do you, do you want to describe it quickly? I'll describe it. Um, yeah. Do you remember it? Yep. Uh. Basically, you said, I'm still as hungry today, even with all of the success, as I was when I was homeless trying to get myself out of the gutter. Right. Yep. Yep. I'm still striving to be the best that I can be. Yep. That's a good Something summary. Like yep. Yep. And she's written back on Instagram. Nicole Barnes has written back. What is it that you're chasing when you're successful? which you are now, what's next? More money, more what? I'm just curious, will you ever get to a point where enough is enough or will you always be wanting more? Will, every, will anything ever become enough to you? Mm. Yeah, I think it's really good because I think maybe people do wonder that as well. When I think about John McGrath and people like this and um, you know, they, he, he certainly doesn't need anything else but he, he's, a, he's a machine. You know? And I think that's... When you're doing something you want to do, it's people quite often um, put money as a measure of sex. Yeah, I said hello to you. Didn't I? Yeah. As a measure of success, and I think that's just one part of it. But even you know me well, mm. both of you do. I don't really like. I like money, but I don't really measure it. Like, I, to be honest, I don't know how much money I have. But it's as long as I've got enough to pay for Jackson when he can't afford his haircuts and pay for <laughs> no but just do things you know I've got a number of kids and I just like not thinking about it so that's something that's good but I enjoy building things mm. like I really enjoy building things so whether that's your personal profile or a company or your body or things like that you know like I really enjoy that part of it when you get there it's actually a bit like deflating can I go back to the so when it, so let me say when you get there when you get to a goal it's a bit like it's, it's really interesting um, when you get a goal. Esther Hicks talks about it. She said, the feeling of the goal is so temporary when you achieve it. The, the juice of it is where the, the magic is. Like the juice of the journey there is where the magic is. It's so true. It's so true. Well, I'll bring people inside. I've got another question for you. But after you won number one for the first time, you were like not yourself for about three months it was like you yeah. lost complete purpose you didn't really know what was next you spent 20 years chasing that one goal and it's like it's over in a night here's yeah. your trophy thanks yeah. for your three <laughs> minute speech see you later yeah a bit mm -mm. you have to reinvent yourself reinvent a purpose reinvent what was next from then yeah i still remember the meetings like i think we all were a bit like well, okay <laughs> what now we all like just that, drifting along a yeah, bit, like waiting that. for direction from yeah. you because that was the number one talking point for as long as i could remember yeah is was that goal and then it's done and it's like okay it took me so long to get there and before i think did we achieve it before you come and then the second time you come or the first time you come, i can't remember when you the, joined the first year that i started in the team is we when joined, we, we did it well, yeah and maybe then, it was because of you <laughs> <laughs> And then we were six years straight after that, wasn't yeah, it? Right. Six yeah, or seven. yeah, I think yeah. there's one not not there. We come second, and then we come second last year. So yeah, so it's um, but there was like four in a row or four something like that. But that's the part that I think about now. Mm. So people say it's funny. What what else was on that question about? Um, there was something else about what now or something or. 
It says at the end, will enough ever be enough or will you continue wanting more? Will anything ever become enough? It's funny, the more I've got, the less I want. Like mm. you walked in looking like literally you've fallen out of a GQ magazine <laughs> with you and you said, I've got a new shirt, new, new, new style, look at the cufflinks, this and that. And I'm in my little short shorts and a and a. <laughs> you said I might get some shorter shorts. Yeah, I might get some shorter shorts. And I said any shorter will be a G-string. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm the rhythm of life is what I'm after now. I really enjoy the rhythm of life. Mm. So wake up, the, the takeoff and the landing. It's like I get so excited about it. Like even tonight, I'm like, okay, what time can I have the sauna? What this and that. But um, see, and that's where the money thing comes in. Because if you want to build a sauna, you build a sauna. If you want to buy an ice bath, get the best ice bath you can. You don't have to think about it. And I think I spent 20 something years like getting momentum in life, but I did pay a price. Mm. Like I did pay a big price, but it's like, I knew that if I just kept going in that direction, it would all work out really good. Yeah. Can I ask about that? Yeah. Did, did you have something more to say? No, no, oh. I was bouncing around. Because I look at you, you're so far further progressed than me and mm. probably 99% of the people that listen to this podcast. I'm more interested in back in the very beginning. So homeless, no money, nothing, no real family, mm. moved to the Central Coast to try and like get your mind sorted again from the drug abuse and things like that. And at some point you decided, okay, now I'm going to turn things around. But like... What was the goal back then? Because it would have been completely different. The goal back then? Because, because I remember, and this is just amazing, it blows my mind to think about it all the time, your first commission check. Yeah. And you had no money, zero. None. Like $60,000 yeah. in, in uh, paid parking tickets and yeah. things like that. And Chris said, gave you... This is Chris Andrews. In $925. And, and you was. said, I can't accept that. I don't feel like I've earned it yet. Yeah. Because he and came over with an envelope. And, and, yeah. and he was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy is borrowing suits. He literally is walking, mm. he has no car. Mm. And he's saying no to his first commission check because he doesn't feel like he, he deserves it. Well, so I didn't. It just came so easy. <laughs> like, it just came. Like, you got to understand, like, I had not nothing. But, but, and I was like, yeah. But this question, this I is, gave this it back is, to this I, is what yeah. I want to dig, dig in on. Yeah, yeah, you gave it back to him. I gave, no, he gave it back to me, but I gave it back to him. I said, oh, look, I, I don't think, I think that's wrong. Like, I haven't really earned, I haven't done anything. I sold like two houses or something or whatever it was. I don't know what it was, but I was more interested in the prospecting. Mm. Like, I wasn't really interested in, like, I've got to sell this to earn this. Mm. I was more like, what is this business? Like, what, this, is in, this is funny. Like, I go out and I... The harder I like go meet people, and because no one door knocked then, and no one did anything, but I door knocked the all all day. Like, mm. like I get the bus to work. Like I, the lady that gave me a job when she put me in a caravan on her property because I didn't have a house and I couldn't live at Dino's parents anymore because they're like, get this drug addict out of here. And then I remember getting in that, laying in the caravan, but it was one that, I was on an acreage and the caravan was one of those round back ones, you know, those real old ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like that. And then no one's been in it for ages. There was spider webs in there. There was like, so first night she goes, look, you can sleep there. And I went in, it had a little thin mattress thing on it. Like, and it hadn't been used for years. And I remember laying down, this huge huntsman ran out and I'm like, oh my goodness. And I remember like that, that time going, okay, I've really got to sort myself out. Like I, there's been a few of those moments, but I was like, yeah, this isn't very good. Like I don't like spiders or anything like that. And I'm like just trying to sleep there thinking, okay, I've really got to give this a crack. But I didn't really know what real estate was. But I saw like everyone was so lazy. Like everyone, like so lazy. I just made, I just get little brochures done and things like that. And I'd put 10,000 out. And I'd be like, people are ringing. This is amazing. Like, and then I'd be door knocking saying, do you want to sell your house? Do you want to sell your house? To everyone. And like, people are like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, actually, we're thinking about it. Like, and this is... And I was like... And then the whole town in Kalani Vale started to go like, oh, this guy... Like, not can't work here, but you've got to watch this guy because he's like... They would have all started turning against you. They would have yeah. started to understand who you were and where you come from. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And then they started to be like, oh, you know, who is this bloke? And then... You would have looked so bizarre. Six foot five, hand-me-down, sketchy suit. Yeah. Like yeah. the shoes. I had a polo shirt on. But I remember, <laughs> like, this guy from Chambers Real Estate across the road, he, like, could see what I was doing. Because when I got to the first real estate office, they had, like, the old filing cabinets. You pull it out like that. 
just two shelves and there was this old guy ted that sat in there all day he just sat in there all day and he'd be pumped if he got to show a house and then the owner um she'd sort of like i don't know she was in and out all the time and then there was two listings in the top drawer and one listing in the bottom drawer like a file you know how you hang the files <laughs> yeah. in, and that's all they had and uh, and no one really like liked the business too much and then like no one used them they're called like coastal waters real estate like it was just a home business thing and um like in a few months the whole filing cabinet was full of listings like but see i door knock all day and then let's say i got to chit away because i'd i just start from the office and walk right so i'd be and if i door knock that suburb then i'd have to walk to the next suburb and then start so it'd take like an hour to get there and then i'd door knock everywhere no lunch no nothing just go and then if i got one that was like at chitaway and they go oh yeah actually funny you come today like yeah we're thinking about it i have to run all the way back to the office <laughs> get the owner and go all the way back again and some days it was so hot she'd drive back out and i'd be like oh it's so nice in this car <laughs> like i'd be like pumped because i could be in the air conditioning but um yeah so like has, I, has she ever called you no i someone said to me that she because what an mate like for her especially, yeah, taking you on just that would have just taking you on in general would have just been the strangest thing ever. Yeah, she, she would have just been going, "Who is this guy? Yeah. Where has he come from?" Well, I was very upfront. I said, "Like, I don't have a home. Like, I have problems in Sydney, criminal <laughs> problems. I have drug problems, blah blah." But she gave me, "I said, I just want to be a trainer. You can, do you have anything here?" Like, I didn't even know what the trainee did in real estate. Is she still around? Yeah, I think so. Just what if? I'm surprised she's not speaking around the world saying, I created Matt Steinway. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone said to me uh, probably a year ago that um, I met this lady called Debbie. She said she gave you your first opportunity. Cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. And she had like these blackboards and I used to like, over a bit of time, I used to like start writing like fantasy fibro house like for sale hundred thousand dollars and stuff like this put out the front of the office and it was just so funny i was just like trying to do anything but um yeah so but i think i i was like then like okay i've got to do something like i have to i had a lot of problems yeah so, so to link it back to the question this is what i'm interested mm -hmm. in what, what what she said is enough enough your enough changed in every chapter of your life it did. like the first chapter of your life was like i'd love a house and some normal clothes and to be able to eat a decent meal every night it wasn't you weren't going i want a million dollars by the no. end of next year yeah. yeah no like then it'd be like i'd really like to get a car at some point it took about a year and a half and then got like a car and then it was always just a thing like a little what's the next little thing like i've never really and even now i like i'm not you know Sure, a jet one day would be really good. That's just so I have to, don't have to go to the airport if I have to go speak somewhere. That's really why I want to get mm. this, this, like, go there. But it's not like a driving force. I'm like, the sauna is the next thing for me, like, as in use it. Like, that, what's the next little buzz that you get? So, so this is how I feel. So me right now, I've got properties trying to manage this, my career, people, growth, all that sort of stuff. Mm. My goals are completely different to yours. But it does get to a point, and we've got a lot of clients that – have so much money and they've sold their businesses and stuff that they're just like, they have no idea what to do. So it's like, it's like they've got to the point where enough's enough and it's, yeah. they've actually lost themselves inside. Yeah, for sure. So do you think you almost need to have, like when enough becomes enough, it's almost a bad thing for you? Yeah, it is. In a way. I think it is. Like I, but, but mine's changed now. So back, back then I wanted to become a household name. I could see by the time I got to Hookers, I was like, okay, I need to become a household name. That was my whole goal. Still sort of is today. So now I'm like, how do I flip the Matt Stein, like what I've done in real estate, how do I flip that over into the public and create something cool as well? So that's where 31 Minutes is like, yeah, I don't mind that. Like it helps people, but I like living it. So like with real estate, when people say, because I reckon half the people that train real estate, they don't, they don't even know what they're talking about. Half of these people. Like, I listen to them. I'm like, you've never done that. I'm like, why are you teaching it? Like, that's not everyone, but, like, some people. I'm like, hmm. You know, like, working in area. I don't know, apart from your mum, I know very few people. Pete Chauncey, I know very few people that have worked in area properly. I mean, properly. Mm. You don't, and you even work with me. Like, I'm, we fight every day over it. But I, that's why I'm like, I like almost, like, being the avatar, like, being the example like at the moment i'm like mm, okay 51 
And then I sort of pick something. I like go, well, Micah Hearn's body's really good, but I don't, I don't exactly want to be a huge bodybuilder. But I'm like, oh, I like this version. And then I go after that little step. And then the next step, I don't really care about the big, you know, do it. Like the thing that you're doing, buying all these thousands of properties everywhere and all that, like that's so not of interest to me mm. at all. But, but you, you like get energy. We're all different. Mm. Yeah, so mine's like, what's the next little step I can do? And so the next little step is our team. We've set our new targets for our team. And it's like, let's just do that one. And then for me, it's like, let's just have a great rhythm to life. Like I really, every day. So like I'm a bit uncompromising with that part because mm. I'm really, unless I do that, I'm not going to be the healthiest I can at 55. So I sort of own that space. It's like prospecting when people say, like, you're a bit of a joke with your 15 connects. Like, you cry about it. <laughs> you do. You cry about it. But that's up to you. I know, fortunately, I love you, and that's how you are, and I understand you. And you get so, like, wah, 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 wah. I've got four appointments, and, like, I'm dying. I'm <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. All right, princess, you go sit over there. <laughs> but, like, I picked 40, and I was uncompromising with it because I knew it would take me somewhere. So I didn't set, set out to have a really large real estate profile in the industry. It just came because of all the little steps along the way that I just stuck to. And I think that's what a lot of people, they're not disciplined enough. They're, they're really, and that's, but I wasn't disciplined before that. So I guess what you were asking before when I was laying in the caravan and stuff, something changed in me. Mm. It wasn't just that moment, but when I walked out of court and uh, the, the judge said, like, I'm going to give you a second chance. You should be going to jail. I don't know what happened. I think a angels intervened. I really don't know. But I was supposed to be going to jail that day, but she gave me a second chance. And I had to do community service. But it's all these little moments where I'm like, no, nah, I've really got to do something. Like, I have to, like, it's up to me. I could see that. I love that saying. It's my favourite in the mm. world. If it's going to be, it's up to me. So when I picked 40 Connects, like, I didn't waver from that for, like, most of my career. Like a long time. Like I'm talking a really long time. So every day I'm like, that's my number one priority. Not the other appointments. The other appointments had to fit around it. And that's sort of like what I do now. So if I want... Because look at people my age. Like they're getting sick, they're overweight, they're things like... Look, look at middle-aged men. Mm. Like so it's... Like I look at all, all of this stuff and I'm like, wow, okay. Like life is not... You know, it's pretty fragile. Like it, it's... I'm not going to be here forever, but I'm like, wouldn't it be cool to get to like 90s and be real healthy? Like, how do you be that anomaly? Yeah. That's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm like, okay, I've lived 50 years. I've got a bit of perspective. I'm like, okay, the next 10 years, let's just focus on, well, really the next four years for me. Let's focus on that. And then that'll extend to the 10 years. And then the formula that I create there, I want to create that over my whole life. And then I want to be a standout when I'm like 67 years old and people go... Wow, look at that guy. How does he do that? But, you know, that's the celery juice in the morning and that's the mm. sauna in the night. That's the ice bath in the night. That's the work. But I want an amazing company as well. Like, we're expanding so fast right now, but I've got to be the best version of me to be the best contributor to the whole thing. Yeah. And it's like an individual thing, right? It is. But your, all your properties and stuff, that's great. I, I can see how it drives you. But it's also like, I think you've extended yourself a little bit far. Oh, no, 100%. I was talking to mum on the phone on the way here because she's half going to have a look at it all for she's me. She's not half going to have a look well, at it. No, she's, she's not. She's, she's taking, taking it control. over. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, yeah, but that was my choice because it did enthuse me, but I ran but way too fast. I have learned from yeah. it. But also, like, I talked to my brother last night and he said, I want to work 15, 15 hours a day, but I, my number one goal is that I'm at home to have dinner with the kids at 6 p.m. That's all he said to me. He doesn't really care about his career too. He loves what he does, but he, he says, just I wants want to enough to provide. Exactly. Yeah. But it, uh, th like that person is looking at your life, but almost reflecting on her own, mm. which is not the right way to go about it. Do you think? Well, like, yes and no. See, in, I, like in I, got this, I got this comment on TikTok the other day, right? TikTok's like the wild west of comments. <laughs> Instagram, people don't. They're half interested in what I do. TikTok, I cop it. <laughs> the right? wild like, west I cop of it. comments. Don't we, Jack? <laughs> yeah. One guy said, why do you always talk? Oh, it's a fake account, but it's probably like <laughs> Your Shelly's friend or something. <laughs> Shelly's good. We get along good. But it's, it's like it's probably some person that doesn't like me. Anyway, they said, oh, why do you always talk about your family last? And I'm like, I, I could write so many things back to that. 
but they're like, like as though family doesn't, um, like I don't care about the family. Mm. If I'm really honest about it, I didn't that much. When I was building a business, like that was my number one priority. Like I needed to get ahead of this thing and it had to take all of my time. And, um, but now I'm like, I, I understand it a little bit more. But I, like you with your properties, I just didn't understand it. Like mm. I was like, oh, okay, get married. Because Karina fell pregnant like almost the first time, I think the first time we had sex. And the dad goes, well, you get married now. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I was a mess of a person. Like I had no idea about anything. I was like, all right then, let's get married. You know, like a kid and another kid. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not working very well. This is like hard work. And then, then when she fell pregnant with Logan, we weren't even together. We just had sex once. Like I went out on a bender and then rang her up, said, come over, she fell pregnant again. I'm like, oh my goodness, what the hell? So like, you know, and then I was with Shelly and then Shelly and I got on really good, but we just, I don't know, just didn't, 16 years we were together and it's just, I don't know, it's just something. And then Bay and Flora were from that. You know, that was like 10 years later. And then now with Tara, it's like, and the, I'm enjoying summer a lot though. But like your properties, it's been a long journey for me understanding that part of me. I don't know if I'm, I haven't been the best dad in the world, but I've been in there swinging, like trying to provide and I've made lots of like mistakes and stuff. But it's like, I mean, Jackson can tell you, you're sitting right there. But I've been pretty hard on them, like rules and structure and things like that, like do this. And that's probably worked against me a little bit. But, um, but today, like, people write to me, oh, how many nappies you've changed? Like, as though, like, I'm some, you know... The CEO of Some hopeless changing. person. And to be honest, one. <laughs> That's how many I've changed. But I said to Tara up front, and this is the benefit of hindsight and understanding and experience. Before she had a baby, I said, I just want you to know I'm no good with newborns. I, like, I'll support you till the cows come home. I'll help you every way I physically can. So I give Summer a bottle every morning. And then, but I said, I'm changing nappies and things. It's just not really what I do. I'm not very good at it. It stresses me a bit. But her life is pretty good too. Like her, she's, you know, we've got a housekeeper to do a lot of the stuff. Um, Tara's got full focus on that. She chose to shut her shop down so she can focus on Summer. So like, I understand it a lot better. Mm. When she's getting stressed, I take Summer, like, and, you know, help her out as much as I can. But I'm not one of those guys that walk around with a baby strapped to the front of them mm. at all. Like, but I'm there in other ways, like making sure her life is pretty good. So when people say this stuff, I'm like, mate, you don't even know what I've been through to get here. Like, friggin' hell, you know? Why do you think people write stuff like that? Because they don't like me. Probably <laughs> they've like, got this opinion, <clears throat> like I'm some um, reckless, divorced twice guy that just is a bit full of himself something like that i think yeah not everyone but like i think some of those people that write it like they have this opinion from the outside like i i'm like hard to live with self-centered but what does it have to do with the person that's commenting that has a completely different life in a whole other area that's what they do though that's what i'm just saying when they write no but i'm they message me they don't even write it on there half the time they message me how many nappies you've changed i'm like what who are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> well, at least run it. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying that for now, like, I, I was up front with Tara. Like, yeah. this, this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. We'll have an amazing life. I'll always protect you. I'll do everything I can. I'll support you the best way I physically can. Let's go build a life. Like, let's do that, you know. And she was stepping into something where I had six other kids, um, two ex-wives. Like, it was very... I don't know, and, and I'm sure she was like, should I be doing this or should I not? You know, it's like, but sometimes if you don't give it a crack, you don't know. Yeah. Everyone said to me, don't marry her. As you know, everyone. I'm going to get her on another podcast at some point, like, as an update. I wonder, wonder if people want to hear from that. But, like, we did one a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's funny, Steve was, when we did that one back then, he goes, mate, that's so dangerous putting your wife on there. I'm like, why? <laughs> He's like, oh, who knows where that could go? And I'm like, I don't know. It just is what it is. I can't remember it, but I'm sure it went okay. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was like a few, a few years, years back. Yeah. yeah. But we're, all, we're general, generally very happy. You know, I think Jackson's happy and, you know, other kids like, you yeah, happy? I don't know. I can't speak for you. Yeah, really happy. Yeah? Yeah, it's going good. So I turn it off because of my foot. I don't want to tap on it or something. Yeah, yeah. So back to the question. It's like, you know, you're at a stage in life now where you've learnt don't buy as many properties. See, if that was me, I would have bought 
either none or one, and then be happy with that. But I found that there's power in simplicity too, like when you keep things very simple. When your ego gets involved, it's a bit dangerous because you make stupid decisions. You know, I just cancelled my new car that's coming. I, I don't need it. Like, I just need a car. Like, I don't need all these things. And um, I, I, I found that, like, when you're really centred, and I'm probably chasing inner peace now more than anything, and I think money brings an element of inner peace, mm. enough of it, because you go the other side, and I know what that's like. It's, it's very, very difficult, very stressful. So I think whatever you do, uh, and time is the most valuable thing you have, health and time, but time, because it passes, you can't get it back. So like yesterday's gone. So whatever you're doing or whoever you're with, you know, even like my last divorce, like very, very, very hard, very difficult, but we, not hard with me and Shelley, but it was like a difficult decision. But, um, you know, you've got to do what you feel you've got to do sometimes. And if you don't, you end up having resentment. I reckon, like you end up sort of like, um, you know, looking back and like going, well, why was I scared of that? Like, why was I, if you feel strongly about something, so like that's why if I feel really strongly about something, I've I, I got to do it, like I have to do it, because it's that impulse inside of you is telling you to do something. It's designed especially for you. That's why you're getting that impulse. Mm. And I've learned over the years, like you just, you've got to go with that thing. And it might seem like, and I, I sit on it for a while though, I don't just go and do whatever. Like I get an impulse to take cocaine sometimes, but I don't go do it because I know it's a bad decision. But like other things that, um, you know, like the car was a good one. Like I've got an impulse to buy a car, but I don't really need that thing. You also got a recommendation from a good friend too, didn't you? Didn't Jack say to you, oh, the new... The, oh, that one, no, but the oh, other one, the one, one I borrowed, I was like, oh, this is not, the one oh, I got I when I, my car was getting fixed, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, this is not bad, I'll just, I rang the guy, Josh, and I said, oh, can you oh, give me one of these? And I'm like, oh. and I was like, it took a while to come, but then after a while, I'm like, I don't really it. need that thing, yeah. So I think simplicity is, is really important, and what you do is just as, so, like, if you're with someone, and you really don't want to be with them, and everything inside of you is telling you, you've got to deal with that. It's not going to get better. It's not going to go away. But sometimes we're afraid to, to do that stuff or where we work or what we're doing. Like if you're working somewhere and you're really getting out of bed every day dreading it, like you are, no, <laughs> no but dreading it, like you just don't like the environment, do something about it. And I find it's that courage that I think sets you free. I feel like your whole life starts on, flows from your career. I really do. Or well, like because... Well, for anybody, because that really is what moves your life forward. Yeah. Because without money in the early days, you can't do anything. But if you wake up and you actually enjoy what you do, you go in, you do a great job, you're enthusiastic about it, doing a great job, that leads to more opportunity. Plus you get raises, you get promoted. So then you're earning more money. But then when you wake up in the morning, you want to eat good because you want to perform well because you, you've got growth within a company that you like. It fl- I think it all flows from then, from that. It does. Then you want to set a morning routine and then you want to get to bed early because you're excited to get up the next day. Then you've got money, you've got health going, got a career that's progressing. I really think it all starts from there, even if it's not about money. Like there's people that I always say florists and stuff, but just love doing that sort of thing. But we deal with people all the time. You go, that person was brilliant. And whatever career it is, that. There's just so much progression for them if they enjoy what they do. Yeah, it is. And I think there's – sometimes people do it to pay the bills. Like, that's like backwards. Like, it's sort of like you don't exchange – so your most valuable asset, time, you don't exchange it for something that is going to drain the energy from you. Like, th- that's where you've got to say to yourself, what do I really want? Like, what do I really want? And you might not know yet, but you've got to start thinking about it. And then you start putting yourself in a better frequency spot. And here we go, we're talking about frequency again. Everyone we talk about for some reason because it's the, it's the essence of the whole universe. So when you're in that frequency, let's say you're in a job you don't like. That's fine. And you're there and you're doing it. And you don't exactly know what you want to do. So what you've got to do outside of work is make sure you're in the highest frequency state possible. So you've got to be a morning routine. I, I would say don't drink. Uh, drinking is literally the, I think, the opposite uh, 
act of what you want. So because you want messages. You want messages? Go this way. If you want a better life, if you want to, you know, drink and have a hangover and, you know, up and down, up and down, that's fine. But it's like if you want to find what your best possible life is, you've got to stay in this zone of excitement and high frequency if you can. So before I've got on this podcast, I've done breathing, I've done... Like the ice bath was 1.5 minus today, minus 1.5. I was pumped to get in there. I couldn't wait to get in because it, was like, it, it uplifts you so much. How are you going to get that anywhere else? So the breathing, done that, celery juice, this, that. Like I love this morning. I didn't do cardio. I did the red light bed. And already here I am. We're doing a podcast and my frequency is right in the zone through the roof. So now my objective is to hold it all day if I can. We got a lot of work to do today, but I'm like, do this here, do this here, do this here. So if I was working a job I didn't like, I'd be concentrating on putting myself in the best energy state possible every day outside of that, but giving 110% to the job that I've got now, because it is giving you some benefit and it could be leading you to the thing that you want. And I'll guarantee you, if you can do that enough and you take care of yourself in the best possible way, go to bed early, stop whinging about stuff, stop, stop complaining, learn about, you know, Um, energy set point, control your emotions, someone will come along and say, or you'll meet someone and they're in a certain industry and you're like, wow, that I, wow, I like the sound of that and it'll get your attention. And then you'll be like, I really want to learn more about that. So then you'll start YouTubing it, you'll start doing that, you'll talk to someone, this and that. And before you know it, an opportunity will come your way. And then you'll be like, I'm going to take that and off you go. You're going to move to Canada and go work with horses. I don't know, whatever it's going to be. But the universe is delivering everything you want every time. But you've got to be in the receptive mode for that. But as long as you get up and you're complaining about this, you're rushing here, you're doing this, you're chucking your coffee down, you're not eating breakfast, you're, you're literally and you're not healthy, you know, you're poisoning your body with alcohol, caffeine. I know people write in all the time, what's wrong with coffee? It's no good for you. Don't listen to me. Talk to Tommy. Talk to Barbara O'Neill, all these people. Caffeine dehydrates you. It ages you. It does all sorts of stuff. It's no good for you. But if you change, make all these slight little changes every day over a period of six months or a year, you watch where your life ends up. What you want to do, you don't have to work it out. It'll come your way. It's about allowing things to you not just going out and getting them. And here's the difference with that. If you're in that state and you're doing something you really want to do, you're turbocharged your life. Because now you've just got to stay in that state and then take massive action and then take massive action. You watch what happens to it. And that person that says when's enough and that never enough is enough. Like ever. Because I'm not chasing the things out there. I'm chasing the best version of me. You never get there. Because the next part is, What's that little bit that I'm missing now? I ring Tommy the other day and I said, what's the next piece of the puzzle? I'm just pumped about this gut health. What's the next piece? He thinks I'm I'm a nutcase. Because I'm like, because even our kids had pizza the other night and I'm like, I made my dinner, didn't I? And I I had, he wrote down to have turkey and I only had chicken and I texted him and said, is it okay to have chicken? He said, yeah, it is. But I don't want to step out of this system because I can see this system is the reason I'm going to be the best version of myself at 55 years old. Like, I'm paying the price up front now. Jackson and I did a, all you can, what we do, all day of eating yesterday. We filmed yeah. the, the whole day of all the food that I ate yesterday. And Jackson goes, I don't know how you do this. Because it takes work. I can't wait to see that. It takes effort. Yeah. Get up. From the moment I get up, do this, do this, do this. I've got it written on my fridge. Do this, this time, this time, this time, this time. Today I've got to go to Sydney with Tara for an appointment just to see someone. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to eat in the middle of the day? I can't exactly, you can't take this meal prep with you because you've got to like cook it at home. So I'm like, I rang Tommy and said, what do I need to eat? He says, me, go buy a chicken, da, 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 and do this and la, la, la. So I now know what to eat. I'm not stepping out of that thing. Imagine if I paid the price every day up front for the next four years. Imagine what, what that's going to turn into. And th- that's exactly what I did with my real estate career. Laying in the, people say, how'd you go from there to there? Well, exactly. I, I did this every day and didn't waver from it. Then I built the formula because I'd learn another, about another idea. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Another. Matt Steinway's system evolves. Boom, away we go. 31 minutes. Where did 31 minutes come from? I wanted to get healthy. I was not healthy. 20 years down the track, I'm like, let's get on a treadmill, put a post up, blah, 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 stick to it, stick to it, stick to it. And after a while, people go, well, look at that guy. He's like doing 31 minutes, whatever 31 minutes is. What is 31 minutes? And boom, boom, boom. And then it explodes into something else. Mm. You see? Yeah. But I didn't try and go build a system in five minutes like you did with your properties. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I'm like, just a baby step. 
but I'm looking over the next decades. I'm not looking. I want to be. I want to be in a Rolls Royce. Well, I saw an agent driving a Rolls Royce the other day on a on Good a watch. thing. Yeah, yeah, I was like, nice. what the hell? Why? I mean, that might be of interest to him, but I'm like, to me, I'm like, I don't want the Rolls Royce. I want the Corolla, and I want to go sell thirty houses and be the guy that's like, a bit unassuming, but just a killer. A little bit like that. Everyone's different. Not bagging that guy, but it's like you want to be the Rolls Royce. Yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so, but it's the baby step. What's the next baby step for you? But you've got to have a longer term view. So with real estate, for instance, people get into it and they're out of it in two years because it's freaking hard. Like, go door knock every day. Get your shoes off. I don't care about your shiny shoes. Get out there and door knock every day and say, do you want to sell your house? People aren't prepared to do it. They're just not. But I was. That's the difference. Why? Because I had that driver inside. I didn't want to go backwards. I couldn't go backwards. I had no choice there. I think sometimes people give themselves choices like, oh, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll do that. I'm like, no, no, it's got to work out. It just has to work out. That's why when I got the comm check, I knew bigger things were coming. I'm like, I don't want your $925. I don't feel like I've earned it yet, but watch what I do earn. I remember one day talking to Chris at the office and I could see it's all a listing game. This whole business is a listing game. And I said, I want to fill the whole window. I think I told you on the podcast. I want to fill the whole window up with my listings. And he laughed at me. I was talking about it the other day to him. I said, remember when you said to me 25 years ago, that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. You want to search? He goes, ha, ha, ha. that's ridiculous. As if you could fill all that up. And I'm like, see, that's what I aim to do. Yeah, but how do you do that? One door knock at a time, one letter at a time, one appointment at a time, car or no car. I didn't see it as an obstacle. I'm like, I'll just run to the appointment. No problem. I've got two feet. Off I go. You know, and if I had a skateboard, it would have been a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough for today. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. See you on the next one.